Hey, goddess. Excited to be with you tonight again. So tonight I'm gonna to talk to you about a couple of things and I'm gonna tell you some story so that you can learn some really good lessons. The difference between nagging a man and holding him to divine feminine testing, the difference between nagging a man and holding a man to integrity. And I'm gonna start by a conversation I had with Cooney. This was a brutal one. First I said, ladies, do this with a man. So if you're dating him, we've been dating four months, and this is what I asked him. I said, babe, summarize yourself in one word. How would you describe yourself in one word based on the current circumstances that you have in your life, which is the love, money, and health ratings? So I said, "What? give yourself one word. And goddesses, put it in the chat, goddess, if you come up with your one word. I told Cooney that my one word for myself is goddess because no matter what my goals are, no matter how much money I have, no matter how much weight I would like to still lose or how much weight I would still like to release, no matter what, I know that I've always done things with class. I've always had my, had my held high and I've always learned from every single challenge and every single relationship in front of me. And I have always committed to a growth mindset over a fixed mindset. <clears throat> So for me, my one word was goddess, especially because that's uh, what I have been working for two years to create for you all that is actually launching in the next two weeks. So the number one word for me is goddess. So guess what Cooney said? So Cooney said that his one word, when I said to my date, describe yourself in one word based on the current circumstances that you have today. And he said that his word is king. Oh, I mean, not to talk shit, but so goddess, instead of getting into a conflict, there's two things that I want you to always do. There's two steps. Number one is get curious. Number two is seek clarity. So for me, when I, my masculine ego side wanted to kind of go off on him and show you're not live, you live with you. You're not a king. You live with a roommate. You're 33. You're still, um, you know, and you're still an employee rather than an entrepreneur. I said, what I'm, I'm thinking in my head, what about you is king? Do you really see yourself as a 10 right now? Because like, to me, that's like for somebody who's so focused on growing, especially now, I feel like the, genuinely the only out of love, money and health. I feel that the only opportunity for me, the most urgently, would be health. There is weight that I still want to lose because I do want to overall not make my body and my heart work harder than they need to. So I would like to, I'm currently working on releasing weight and that's why I've been going hiking um, multiple times a week for like two hours at a time. So anyways, I said to Cooney, um, and goddess, if you have a question, please put it in the chat. I'm just checking in with you all and telling you this story because I think I was able to handle this situation with grace and all I wanted to do is be a bitch, but I didn't. So instead of saying, well, what the hell? Like you're, you know, physically, you don't even work out. You don't have basic athletic ability as you demonstrated when we were paddle boarding. And goddess, this is not me talking shit on somebody that I am dating. This is me honest, being honest and taking an authentic life inventory of this person who has been in my life for four months that I'm trying also to affect and help grow. And so I'm honest about his problems because he is honest about his problems and his, not problems, but his challenges, his growth opportunities. And so I asked him, I said to my date, identify yourself in one word. And he says, King. And I'm thinking, wait, you have a roommate. You live in an apartment. You don't own a home. Um, you don't live by yourself. You are, you don't even have a gym routine. You don't even have a gym routine. You stay up too late. You have not a good work-life balance. What words... Like I'm, I'm sitting there thinking as somebody who's potentially going to be a partner of mine in my life, that if I can positively impact him and I'm sitting there thinking, you see yourself as a king, really? Like I would have settled for if he saw, if he said that he saw himself as a leader, but at, at least that's because, you know, he has 10 people under him at work, but I'm thinking, let's be, let's be realistic. Give me something that I can work with. If you already think that you're a king, 
and you already have like this ego, but without any of the receipts for it, I can't work with that. I have to, life coaching only works with people who are actually receptive and self-aware. <laughs> Um, I love the, his, I, his narcissistic level of confidence is like one of the top attractive things about him. But, um, Raj says, I have a great work-life balance. I go to the gym every day. Are you hitting on me? The wild Dahlia says he seems very nice, but I feel like you really need someone who is further along. So goddess, First of all, put your one word in the chat, whether you have the receipts or not, or not. I'm not going to beat up on you about this. Let's just like actually be realistic. Um, and some of us are still in our princess era instead of our um, goddess era. So anyways, so he says to me, goddess, he gets defensive <laughs> and he goes, <laughs> and I was being a little bit bitchy, right? This is like divine feminine testing. But at the same time, I want to hold him to integrity with his words. Like you can't just say random shit. So I want him to be more intentional about his words. And I've been teaching him this um, statement about say what you mean, what you say and say what you mean. So say what you mean and mean what you say. And he's like, yeah, I'm a king. I see myself as a king. And I'm thinking, you have a roommate. You don't pay my rent. You're 33, but and you don't have a workout routine. You don't sleep enough. You're a workaholic. Your work stresses you out. Like, what about this? And, and I'm obviously, like, the best woman that you've ever had <laughs> or been in the same room with. So, like, maybe you're a king for that. And, and it's just, it's funny, goddess, because at the same time, I, look, I want him to be a king. I want that to be a true word for him. And this is not ragging on my, my current date, but, um, the wild Dahlia says, my word is consistent. That's great, goddess. Oh my gosh, Kalu, thank you for the rose. Thank you so much for the rose. User 5792 says, is this Cooney you're talking about? Yes, goddess. I asked him to explain himself in one word. Thank you so much for the roses. This is like my first time getting, um, one of my first times getting gifts, goddess, since this is like a week, um, within a week of me going, going live. I'm so glad that you're enjoying the live, goddess. Ask me anything that you have on your mind. Um, Kalu says, I've been following up for a while now. I love your content. Thank you, goddess. Thank you so much for all my roses. User 5792 says, girl, I think he needs to go. <laughs> Juby Hearts You says, thank you for your wisdom, beauty. Thank you. Um, it's Anne 921. Why did you start with the guy in the first place? What do you see in him? Uh, goddess, every, every human is three. They have an opportunity to be three things. They can be a brain, body, or a heart. And I recommend that women and men get two out of the three. And Matthew Hussey says, that this is called unique pairings. So for example, this would be like sexy versus hot matrix or the crazy versus hot. Oh, she's smart, but she's funny. You know, she's rich, but she loves Del Taco. <laughs> and I'm speaking from the heart at that point. Um, what did I see in him? And so what I saw in him was that he has the same heart as me and he has the same God complex. And other than, you know, we attract who we are. So the fact that I'm not help, that I'm not impressed with uh, Cooney's level of health and physical fitness, it's really only a reflection to ignite and teach me how damn annoying it is when someone is half-assed about their body or their life. So for me, attracting a guy who I feel like is so neglecting his health, all that that is, is a reflection of how I feel about myself. And goddess, I totally felt like I was neglecting my health over the last few months. So that's completely makes sense. We have been eating like kings for four months and I have gained like seriously between 20 and 30 pounds. I honestly, I would say, I don't know how I did it because I was still working out three to four at least times a week. But I think I actually had crashed my metabolism when I was eating between like 1500 and 2000. And then all of a sudden, just for dessert alone, we're having four full-sized cookies from next to UC Irvine from Insomnia Cookies. I mean, that can happen. Okay, goddess. Oh my gosh, I love us. Liz, Liz Mayer, 1993, I love you, love you. Brianna, 11, literally in love with you. Love you too, goddess. Vidya, your tarot reader, says, I'm going on a trip to Montreal and the guy I'm talking to booked my Airbnb and we haven't even met. That's really great, goddess. You must be in a very receptive era. 
um, case number one, L says, how do you drop your guard and allow your femininity to come through? Guess what, goddess? Um, I'm actually rubbing my belly while I tell you this. How do you drop your guard? And does everyone just want to rub your belly with me, goddess? This is so therapeutic. And it, for me, I really have to get comfortable. I've always carried my weight in my belly. But can you imagine when you're pregnant and you're and you still hate your body even when you're pregnant? I mean, if I can't accept and love my body and my hips and my curve now, am I going to hate myself being pregnant too? I mean, that is my question for you. So that's why we practice radical self-acceptance and body positivity and body confidence at every age and weight, because you deserve to enjoy your pregnancy. And no, I'm not pregnant. I've always looked like this. Um, so case one L, how do you drop your guard and allow your femininity to come through? Guess what, goddess? You learn to trust yourself. And let me tell you about the self-trust thing, because I have this formula and I call it the Jacqueline method. And it says that self-trust plus self-respect equals self-love. And this is actually a formula I've been thinking about for a while, like not, not the whole two years I've been doing this with you angels, but more like um, one year. And I realized this, and let me tell you about self-trust. You can't ever trust others until you're trusting yourself. And this means if you take something out of the fridge and you don't feel like eating it, okay, and you know that you're dreading eating it, but then you leave the food in the fridge for yourself to eat later, how is that self-loving? How is that self-loving goddess? You're make you're going to make yourself eat something that you never wanted in the first place. I mean, didn't our parents give us agency? My parents always told me I don't have to do anything that I say that um, I don't have to do anything I don't want to do. And my mom mostly meant this, like not with going to doctor's appointments, but like going on rides. If there's a ride that I feel scared to go on, no one is going to force me to go on it. And that was a safety container that my parents actually did instill of all of the um, kind of careless, toxic stuff that they did in their, in their own childhood trauma. My mom and dad did say that you don't have to do anything that you don't want to do, such as going on a certain ride. And that gave me a lot of agency. And this is where the self-trust has to come back up. Don't make yourself eat something in the fridge that you don't want to eat every time you look at it. Go throw it away. Don't save it for later. This is how you build basic self-trust in the Jacqueline method of self-trust plus self-respect equals self-love. What I did is the little things. I would never leave a dish for myself ever. That's something I stopped doing. I'm not going to leave a mess for myself to do later, I'm gonna take care of it right now. If I go on a trip, when I come home, I want my house to look amazing and not make and not remind me that I'm not on vacation anymore. And so I have a, a deep cleaning before I leave for any trip because when I know the most self-loving thing I could do for myself is absolutely love and adore my environment when I get home from the vacation. This is how you start doing self-loving stuff. You don't force yourself to eat foods that you're not feeling anymore. You never leave a mess for yourself again. You do your toughest chores first. And this is this is like over a year of perfecting the art of this. And this is why all of a sudden I have literally a clutter-free, a zero clutter lifestyle. It's because I don't set myself up for failure. Set yourself up for success, goddess. That's the most self-loving thing you could do. Amina Natural Life. Did he agree to separate hotel rooms? So goddess, he's picking me up at 730 and we're actually going to discuss it tonight. So on Saturday, I so he asked me, what are you most excited for in the month of October? He goes, Halloween Horror Nights, Diwali, taking a day trip to Catalina, um, Halloween. He goes, what are you most excited for in October? And I said, rent. Pregnant pause, just stare, be vulnerable, show your carotid artery, and wait. So now you're just telling him that you're so excited this month because this is the month of rent. And he goes, okay, that, that makes sense. He goes, what second? And I said, iPhone 14. And I was like, what about you, babe? <laughs> this is what I said to him. <laughs> This is on a uh, Friday or Saturday night, I think Friday. And so 
always do the pregnant pause and always say the truth because a man, he might think I'm like a gold digger or something for saying that I'm most excited about rent. I didn't say something wholesome. Like I'm excited for Diwali. I said rent. And he's like, well, what else? And he's like, and I'm like iPhone 14. And guess what God is? There is a difference between nagging a man and holding him to integrity. So in September, Cooney um, was asking me, you know, Hey, like what plan are you on? I had told him I want an iPhone. And I was like, when do they come out? And he was like, yeah, I just, you know, the new one came out. I just, it's coming out in October. So I just assumed that I would get one for both of us next month. So in September, he told me that he was going to get both of us an iPhone the next month, which is October. So I reminded him, I don't set him up to fail, right? I don't like see him falling and I'm just going to like let him crash. Would not, maybe on his own merit, I will but not when it comes to me missing out. I'm not going to let a man fall when I am actually not going to um, benefit from that. So goddess, keeping a man in integrity is not the same as nagging. So when he said, what are you most excited for this month? I said, rent. And he said, what else? I said, iPhone 14. And then I was like, what about you? So Miss Frizzly says it's almost 10, 15. Woo. Goddess. Oh my gosh. Um, so this is the week of the rent conversation goddess. And so I just, maybe I should have been praying for his um, bonus checks that were coming in. But he just told me to, um, he just told me to trust him and to trust God uh, as far as worrying about money. So about the separate hotel rooms, on Saturday, we went to Cheesecake Factory and we were at brunch. And um, he was, he, I said, so what do we have going on the rest of the month? And he said, Catalina day trip. He said, um, Diwali, he said Halloween Horn Horn Nights at Universal Studio, um, he said Halloween, and I said, oh, okay, I was like, that sounds great, but I was like, so no Vegas? And, because we were supposed to be going to Vegas, like, uh, October 20th, and he's like, well, we're still gonna talk about that, he goes, I think I want to talk about it on Tuesday or Wednesday night, so that we can figure out what we're doing with it, about it, he's like, I'm giving it true consideration, and I want to talk about it like in a couple of nights. And goddess, this is the first time he has ever told me that he needs to take time to think about something. So I'm glad that he's giving it proper, serious consideration. And I'm very curious what he's going to say about the separate hotel rooms. And But mostly I'm just really curious to see if my life is going to change that much in the next week. I mean, that would be a huge life change for me to have him paying my rent and to have an iPhone and to go like to our first day trip to Catalina. So K dog says it's okay, babe. Just drink water, cleanse your metabolism will reset. Thank you. Um, oh, user two five five seven 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 four three says, why don't you focus on being the best version of yourself in terms of your body, being in shape, getting a job, just curious, no offense. So as far as a job, I actually am living my purpose now. I have been building something for to help women for two years. And finally, it's a coincidence that you talk about this because in the next two weeks, it is launching. Right now, I'm actually beta testing it. I'm having my mom, my big sister, and my little sister test it out. So there's two things. Like one is a guide, and then one is a group coaching program. And um, But also, I've been really busy with my other courses, too. I'm currently in Shay, Your Love Divas course. I mean, it's like two hours of self-work on yourself a day. Um, Kailu, thank you for finger heart. Sorry, I'm just catching up. I'm behind on the comments. Thank you for finger heart and rose. Um, um, how did separate, separate rooms for Vegas go? Yeah, so that's what I was just talking about is we're actually going to talk about it. He said either talk about it tonight or tomorrow, Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, Triceratops. Hey girl. She says, I also do deep cleaning before trips. This is facts. Yes. Saltwater smooches says, explain the artery. Oh, goddess. So this is called a mating signal. Whenever you're in public, a lot of men pick up artists. They say that when a girl is playing with her hair, that that's like a mating signal. It's actually most of the time, <laughs> she doesn't even realize she's doing this, but most girls play with their hair because they're moving out, um, they're moving the hair out of the way so they can show the skin because they're actually subconsciously trying to show the man their carotid artery. And the carotid artery is the most vulnerable part on your body. Uh, that's where the animal goes for uh, in hunting and, you know, in the wild. And so think of the animal kingdom. You know how sometimes they say like, oh, that person really went for the jugular. 
Yeah, so the jugular vein or the carotid artery is in your neck, and that's why a lot of times men think that a woman is playing with her hair, but subconsciously, she's actually just clearing her hair um, out of the way so that she can show him his neck because it's a symbol of vulnerability. And so it's basically a sign of dominance. So think of like a lion and a lioness in the jungle, and he's like trying to come up to get some. She's basically showing him like, I'm here for it. So I don't know. It, it, it has to do with animal hierarchy, goddess. So that's what I mean when talking about um, showing your neck to, to the man. Never ask for a man, ask a man for something like this. Never go up to a man and ask him for something like this. Never put your arms around him and ask him like this. Always do this before. Get the hair out of the face. Show the neck when you hug him if you're asking him for something. Um, what's the deal with the artery thing? Thank you, goddess. Hopefully that helped. Feminine savage. Yes, Amina Natural Life. Um, Almond Silk. Do you enjoy his company? Uh, depends if he's being an integrity or if he's being self-conscious or if he's being a beta. User 257743. If he doesn't pay your rent, is it over, Jackie? I feel like you're my ex or something. <laughs> Who else would ask that? Jessica98 Marie says, I love you. Love you too, goddess. Um, now I know says, I love that you love Shay, me too. I mean, goddess, I'm literally in her course. Um, it's, I believe it's like a 60 day program, but it takes like two hours of self work every day. And then once you finish, most people just start over and they stay in the program. They stay in the community. She has meditations, um, every weekend or sorry, not every weekend, but, um, Shay has meditations. Like I notice, it's like pretty much ends up being like one weekend a month. And it's just so invaluable to be in a community of Queens like that. Baby Keeksy, so glad I found you on my FYP. Ooh, that's a lucky one, goddess. That means that you, if you have found me, this means that you're literally about to up level to an entirely new confidence level. I, I, I call it Godfidence. And that also means that you're the type of woman who gets spoiled if you found me. I see, I feel I like, no. Are you religious? Is your partner. Uh, when I asked him that, is he religious? He said no, so I'm not gonna give him the credit. He is actually of Hindi belief and I am Christian. I would consider myself very religious. I read the Bible. I'm waiting for marriage. Um, I believe in being an edifying wife. Mich Michelle VA18. So true. I love showing my neck and looking deep in the eyes. Gets me compliments. Good girl, goddess. Jess Crouch, 1304. How do I get him to do what he said he would do without nagging? Uh, make it more of a friendly reminder. So the two steps that I always have for you goddesses to really stay in your feminine energy and keep your frame as a woman instead of literally having your mental health suffer in your life. The two things are number one, get curious, seek clarity. It doesn't matter if it's an illness or a man pissing you off. Always get curious first. Wow, I have a headache. I wonder what this headache is trying to teach me. I'm going to get curious as number two. And then, sorry, number one. And then number step two, after get curious about whatever's going on, the feeling that you're having in your body, the ache, the pain, the conflict you're having with a partner, um, always step one is get curious and always step two is get clarity. And this is literally how I unfucked my life. Um, get curious and remind him, Hey, you're on the same team as him. Remember goddess. So his wins are your wins. So you don't, you your job is to make sure that he's never set up to fail. Be a good team member, goddess, be a good friend, be a good guide. Stop dating, start relating. Ari Diaz. Wait, so is he paying your rent right now? No, he actually said, um, October 15th because he's waiting for a bunch of, uh, considerable bonus checks from his project at work. User 5792, what, who is Shay? What's her at? It's at Shay, your love diva. I have had like three coaches in the last year. She is like my life and love coach. Her program, literally, it takes like two hours of self-work on myself a day. And so that's why I haven't really rushed to get my guide or my group coaching out because it's like I'm literally doing full-time work every day and it, it takes it out of you, goddess. I mean, you can't be creating when you're working on yourself and healing. And I did not want, I refused. The reason I haven't put out anything paid in two years, even though I've obviously been, been helping you all and answering DMs and blah, 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 doing TikToks 
literally because I didn't want to, I refused to put out an offer or a brainchild that was coming from a fucked up place. And if I have been dealing with disordered eating for the entire time or self-sabotage um, or thinking of healing my father wound, I'm not going to put out a course in the middle of all of that. And I have been like deep in the woods on Shay's course. Mary Mads, how to get over the feeling that all men inevitably will cheat. Number one, <laughs> you learn to trust the world when you learn to trust yourself, goddess. And so you... I think you still have some things that you need to reconcile with yourself. I think there's beliefs about yourself that you might not be um, on stable ground with. I think you would need to do um, a core values exercise and also write down um, your love, love vision so that you can understand that there's people like what you seek is seeking you, goddess. Um, Cooney is a no ma'am. <laughs> is this Shay? <laughs> Kelly says, do you ever see yourself getting married? Goddess, I literally was not, you're born a wife. You don't become a wife. I, I, a man just ultimately identifies that you're his wife, but you are born a wife. That is why I wear a ring because I don't become a wife, goddess. I'm already a, I'm already a wife. You're born wife. If God wants you to be a wife and a mom in your lifetime, then you're already a wife. You don't become a wife suddenly. That's why I still wear a ring, even though I'm 27 and single. Because you become a wife when a man identifies you as his wife, but you're born a wife. You don't just become one one day. User5792 says, may I ask your age? Can anyone help um, in the chat, goddess? I feel like I'm definitely, I thought everyone knew that I'm 27. Shy Shyla Randall. Hey, woman. Hey, goddess. Adri Man Adri Minero. Just doubled on your post on my FYP. I can't be can't wait to be in a loving, healthy relationship and be spoiled. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, no. If you found me, then this is definitely what's headed for you. I mean, you can't be around somebody who wants this lifestyle that badly if you're not um, actually already actively attracting it yourself. I mean, TikTok knows better than anybody. Jocelyn NG says, how do I tell my man to delete girls on social media? Or should I ask him for his password? I think you're approaching this from totally the wrong mindset, goddess. First of all, we need to have a abundance mindset instead of a fear or a lack mindset. Goddess, I'm way further up on the comments to say no, so I will get to your question. So number one, <laughs> he's going to, that's something that you would never want. If there's a problem or if there's a behavior about your man, you want it in plain sight. You definitely don't want him creating a fake Instagram because you have the password to his current one. If he's giving women attention, it's because he hasn't met his game changer. Okay, and everyone is a placeholder. And you know damn well that we would never delete a hot daddy off of our own Instagram unless we were literally with our game changer. And if, if, if there's a question, that's how you know that somebody is still your placeholder. And they might be a placeholder because you're not emotionally ready for them either. <sighs> Edifying. Oh, right. Eleanor says, what kind of wife did you say you wanted to be? E something. Thank you, Miss Frizzly. Yes, I want to be an edifying wife. It's in the Bible. Um, user 749-4020. How do I attract a relationship? All I seem to be attracting is hookups with men that don't commit. Goddess, that's because you're emotionally unavailable. So we have healing to do there because there's more available to you. Brandy Richardson, 25. You have pretty eyes. Thank you so much, goddess. I appreciate um, the ability to use what God gave me on this camera. GA Sunshine, 77. I'm trying to hear. I am trying to heal from self sabotage real bad. Me too, goddess. I really struggle with that. The ultimate fiend. When are you going to Vegas? Update on the rooms. Yes, goddess. So we're actually talking about that tonight. He said we're going to talk about it on Tuesday or Wednesday because he wanted to give it his full consideration to get separate hotel rooms. Uh, Adri Minoro, it's hard for me to heal my father wound and, and my distrust to men I love. Any tips? There, um, I'm actually, <laughs> that's funny that you say that. So today, you know, I've been working on this guide for like two years. So now I've been working on it 
it, I basically I've been making like notes and stuff that I notes of everything that helped me in the last two years in my self love journey, which actually made me like this incredibly have this abundant magnetic love life. And I'm like, why do I have so many boyfriends? Like I'm so loving my singleness. And so it was literally like a switch that everyone already talks about. And I wish that somebody would have taught me that how to succeed in love is to play the master game of self love. Um, I see, I feel, I know, I, if you're comfortable, I'd love to hear you talk about your disordered eating recovery process and dating. Well, goddess, I mean, one of the trains of thought that I found really helpful is you don't really struggle with, I never really struggled with binge eating if I was like on a cruise. I never really felt the need to binge eat if I was at a buffet in Las Vegas, right? And so people asked, that's where it's different from like an, al an alcoholism problem. When you have an alcoholism problem, it doesn't go away, right? If you stopped it at a certain point, you might have withdrawals. Well, that's the, that's the weird thing about like disordered eating habits is that it's different from an addiction. It's a pattern, but it's actually not as permanent as addiction is because you don't literally have that same withdrawal pattern. And so, for example, what I noticed is that because I'm going out on dates at least four nights a week with, with this investor, because we're eating out so much, I have total liberty to order you know anything I want, appetizers, entree, dessert. And so I don't feel the need during the day, I noticed, and this is a weird way to get cured of disordered eating behavior, but I noticed that because I'm constantly going on dates, and then I have leftovers from the next date, from those dates, so I actually have food left over in the house, and I don't have that decision fatigue, having to figure out what to eat every day, <laughs> just having that food available always because of our dating, and because of going out and, and just eating a lot all on at least four nights a week on dates, that's actually what helped me. Because binging comes from restriction. And as much as I want it, as much as I might have restricted my um, meal times during the day, I always knew that I was like getting fed at night. So for me, a, a little preview into like my healing journey with this is that give yourself, what I did was I just gave myself the freedom. I said, yeah, you can eat that. You can eat whatever you want. And and then I was lost to feeling, goddess. <laughs> Give in to your instinct. Give in to your instinct and then they can't be used against you. The point is, um, if you don't become a master of the mind, your body will become a servant to your mind. Jess Crouch 1304 says, can you call me goddess one more time? Jess Crouch 1304, hey goddess! ASAP Jose, how do I get comfortable with keeping a roster of men? Radical honesty, goddess. It ain't tricking if you got it. If you can't admit to a man, let's say that you go on a, on a Bumble date. And then he's asking, what are you doing the rest of the day? And then you say, I actually have another date tonight. Yeah, have a coffee date with a guy. And he's like, wow, so you're dating multiple men. Are you just dating crazy? Are you just boy crazy? You have two dates in one day? Who does that? If he starts to shame you. This is what I would, this is what I would say and what I have said. Oh, well, I respect your opinion. It's so important for me after everything that I have learned in my life and the ways I've healed myself. It is so important for me to become a mom and a wife to the right husband. And the only way to do that is through dating. So, you know, whether I want to be dating or not, I just know that my husband is also looking for me. And so this is one of the necessary evils. What do you think? Always start that with you respect his opinion, but radical honesty. A, a woman who cannot keep, um, a woman who cannot keep her frame and keep her life honest should not be dating multiple men. The only time I have ever dated multiple men is when I can be honest with the fact that I'm interviewing other candidates. It ain't tricking if you got it. Sweet Nanelle, say that again. I wouldn't delete a hot daddy off my Instagram page until I know I'm locked in, aka married. You know, God is how you know if a man is your game changer instead of your placeholder is if you actually get married. How about that? 
And you know what my ex told me, the one, the gentleman, he was actually from Ghana. You know what he told me is that I, he was like, I posted, you know, a woman in my past. He's like, I posted a woman in my past and I didn't want to do that until we were married. And then guess what? We broke up. And everyone was like, what happened to the pictures? You guys aren't together anymore. Now it's weird. You have to take them down or there's a story. And he said, I don't want to post another woman. He goes, when I post another woman, Jackie, it will be my wife. Goddess, guess what? I got him to post me and we're not together anymore. <laughs> I love that part. I love that part. We all know that was, it was going to go that way. I mean, he was just self-abandoning there. Shyla Randall says, I want to see you in Vegas. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really care if we go to Vegas or not. I'm actually going in November already just to be with family. Um, Kenna, how do you get over first date nervousness? You switch from, I hope that he likes me to, huh? I wonder what I like about him. Let me see if I can find anything I like about him, but maybe I probably won't. I'll just learn a lot from him. Switch it, goddess. Stephanie Cosmopolitan, I left, I let my confidence chip at me after my breakup. How do I avoid this goddess? This is time to build, rebuild the relationship with yourself and come back stronger. That's the best part of this whole thing. Uh, user 74940020, what strategies can I use to make the guy I'm talking to want to commit without pushing him away? Ooh, goddess, never. Uh, uh, this won't work. Uh, do not use strategies on him. Men live in the space. It needs to be his idea. And when you do this right, goddess, men will be so annoying. I never thought that men could be the ones to want to commit. Goddess, they annoy the crap out of me with this idea now. It's a different type of feeling when, as a woman, you have this, like, all this creative energy and energy always moving in the sense that you, as a woman, you have this desire for community. You have this desire for variety. You have this desire to connect with people and feel connected to and then a man is like, oh, I, I want to lock you down. It's like horrible for our freedom energy. Um, so look, the strategy that I would use to make him to commit without pushing him away is um, treat him like a pest. So I'm, t I'm not giving this as professional advice. I'm just saying this is what always works for me. Because I literally love my singleness so much. And that's exactly the moment where I, where I attracted so much husband material. And now I'm like annoyed. I'm like, oh my God, having an annoying husband and annoying kids around all the time. The background music of my life now is like a self-love affirmations. Ariana Grande, my best friend on the phone, talking about her fake baby doll so that she can reparent herself. Um, and my cat, Hope, purring. Can you imagine how annoying it'll be when you have a husband and kids? Goddess, and I value marriage a lot. I'm even saving myself for marriage and being abstinent. Um, and I'm Christian, I believe in Bible, and I believe in the sanctity of marriage. Like, But if you don't appreciate, if you take your singleness for granted, goddess, when you actually get in a good relationship, it's not going to feel as good as you thought it would because it's really not, it's not that exciting now. When the goal is somebody committing, it, when the goal is you locking somebody down and being locked down, it's not going to feel good. The relationship interaction is not going to feel good because this is what keeps happening to me. As soon as you, the way to literally get a guy to commit to you is to love your singleness. <clears throat> Jasmine 91, how do I tell him I don't want a broke man? Um, tell him, tell him with your actions, goddess. Uh, this is, this is what I think. We have to inspire men to be trained. If you, let me tell you this. If he's, if you're attracting a broke gentleman, then this means that you need to get comfortable talking about your boundaries, talking about your standards, talking about what you do want. That use, use this, uh, use this as a tool, goddess. Use this man as a learning tool to talk more about your boundaries and more about what you're looking for. Girl, okay, here's one tip. Goddess, you should be so comfortable talking about what you're looking for and what your dream love vision is that you have it memorized. So, Goddess, here's one way to know if you're actually getting close 
to your love vision, the first way to get closer to your love vision is to memorize it. You should know what you're looking for in a man like the back of your hand. And the, one of the ways that you can do this, I have this, I actually have this in my guide as one of the exercises. I actually came up with this yesterday. So take your top 20, take your top 20, um, basically perfect partner traits, whatever you want in it. I'll show you mine right now, actually, if you want an example. And goddess, feel free to do this with me. I think that would actually be really great for you. So let's do a little, a very quick, less than five minutes, um, perfect partner list. And while you're doing mine, I'll show, while you're doing yours, I'll show you mine. Okay, let me find it, goddess. So take out paper. We're going to make a list of our 20 perfect partner uh, qualities. I actually showed the Sukuni. Okay, let's see if this is going to be able to, I think I need to turn it around. Okay, one second. One second, goddess. Let's make our our perfect 20, our perfect 20 here. Okay, this is our list of perfect 20 ideal um, ideal qualities, okay? I actually read this to Cooney. There was only three to four that he said that he's not currently. Number one, healthy and active. Number two is attentive to detail. Number three is clean and organ clean and hygienic. And number four was organized and neat. He said that he wouldn't, um, he said that he didn't think that those were true of him right now, but he'll work on it, it becoming true. Goddess, take a screenshot of this and DM it to me. I want to, I want to be able to show you this example in the guide later. It's okay. I might redo it for you, goddess. But anyways, if you make your list of people, qualities that you're looking for, mine, write it, write it now, goddess. Mine were, my 20 were financially secure and diversified, generous with money and affection, great relationship with married parents. So not only does, for me to date this man, I will not date somebody who doesn't have married parents and doesn't have a good relationship with them. I don't care about the excuses. If my parents were not on par, I need his parents and his family to be A plus because I want to be adopted. I want another shot at childhood. So he must have a great relationship. He must have a great relationship with his parents and they must be married. He must be healthy and active. Obviously this isn't a must, but I can't require a man to be healthy and active unless I'm healthy and active. And I know that I'm could be at a healthier weight. So, um, healthy and active, kind to animals, purpose-driven, communicative, direct and brave, balanced and virtuous, faithful and trustworthy, um, positive and growth mindset, funny and lighthearted, attentive to detail. Um, this is very uncommon, actually. Uh, I haven't seen it in any gentleman I've met so far. Attentive to detail, enjoys similar tastes, plays the long game, is of leadership to others, clean and hygienic, organized and neat, health conscious and vibrant, happy supportive demeanor. I cannot do negative Nancy. Um, where's your dream honeymoon destination, said the ultimate fiend. I always wanted to go to that um, adult, I think it's like an adults only uh vacation like sandals spot from couples retreat have you seen couples retreat that's like my all-time favorite movie Dem demarissa avedra 27 do you support the three-month dating rule uh goddess <laughs> you definitely are hearing from me that you should wait for marriage but if you were going to do it sooner than then i totally agree that it should be at least after three months Goddess, you can't make an educated decision unless three months have passed. I have found bad stuff out about a man at the two month and three week mark. One week before our three months. And this was actually with my experience with the man that I met who's from Syria. Like right on the cusp of the three month mark. Uh... Jess Crouch, my problem with the roster, I can only be interested in one person at a time. How do I fix this? You know, everyone says that. And all I have to say is this is not a goddess mindset. This is a good girl mindset. 
Do you sing a girl? Hi, lover. It's me. Hang on. I'm sorry. I have 30 messages to catch up with. This fella is goddess. Do we consider genetics when looking for a husband? For example, the health of the family, the personality, and the looks. Oh my gosh. I'm literally, I have to, um, I have to rub my belly while we talk about this because then one of the huge deterrents that I notice um, that makes me kind of doubtful. One thing that makes me not really um, super happy is that Cooney also carries his weight in his belly. My boyfriend, my husband better not carry their weight in their belly. My kids do not need this trait. I mean, at least we're very consistent. I have literally looked pregnant since I was like 13. Jess Crouch says, treat him like a pest. Sorry, I know it sounds bad, goddess, but that's my answer. Do you, single girl, stop being so nice and desperate, then he will want you. Dispolis, am I a little too much for considering and asking about family health? Absolutely not, goddess. Play the long game, goddess. I love how much you plan for your future. I love how much you want to invest in yourself, goddess. I'm literally here for that. This is exactly the type of people who are in a life coach live chat on a Tuesday night is women who do care that much. Thank you for actually giving a fuck about your life, your future, your marriage, and the father for your children that you're going to pick. Thank you. K. Mitcha, I didn't get married until my 50s. I never wanted to actually get married and I'm divorced now. Never ever go against your core instincts. How would that ever make you happy, goddess? I'm glad that you went through that lesson. Never again will you go against yourself. My personal opinion is the most, um, most of the time people who don't want uh, marriage or children, it's a, coming from a very fearful place. And I have literally coached people like this. And 100%, if you heal and that's still not the life that you see for yourself, then I like it. But I don't want you, I don't want women to think that don't talk yourself out of marriage and kids because you're scared. You are not your parents or their mistakes. And they got to show you a lesson of how not to do it. And this is only going to mean that your marriage is more successful than theirs. So your personality, your true desires are on the other side of fear. So if you're going to make a decision to not have, uh, to not, if you're going to make a decision that doesn't include marriage or kids, just make sure that it comes from a healed place. That's all I ask. I want more beverage. Goddess, let me tell you about a drink. I'm going to make this go viral. What this is, is decaf coffee, uh, sparkling water, and a tiny bit of creamer. Sparkling water makes it so that it's like almost like you're drinking like cream soda or something. And then the sparkling water gives it like the crispy and like makes it really refreshing. And it's like you always feel better because like you're still drinking some form of water. Here, I will... drink to market for um this is the first time I'm announcing my invest invention it's sparkling water plus decaf coffee plus creamer okay and this is what I literally have like throughout the day it saves me so many calories um as opposed to just drinking like coffee with creamer all day because this way I don't need um, hardly as much creamer because I have like half of, um, instead of a lot of coffee, now we, you can't put that much creamer in if you're making the room for the sparkling water. And the sparkling water just gives like refreshment vibes. Okay. Uh, oops. Uh, ooh, now I know, says I can't. Except a guy watching naughty stuff while dating me and almost every man does this. How do you handle? Uh, 
I actually had this conversation with Pooney and I said, I do not want you to get to a point where you are desensitized and we cannot, and when we're married one day, we can't bond this way without you having a movie playing in the background. I said, please look into this. I don't want you, I said, we're so young, you're only 33, let's not desensitize and overload our dopamine receptors and desensitize our emotions to a point where if we do get married someday and we have literally waited until marriage for all of this, let's just really take this issue seriously and look into how many times a week you're watching it so that we don't end up needing a movie to play in the background of our bedroom when we're finally in the marriage bed. I completely, now I know, thank you. Um, thank you for bringing that up. You are so advanced. You're so advanced for even saying that. And really look into it. And, and, and look, I have been in multiple Bible studies for all women. It's not just men really consider what it is that is happening in your brain and your body when you watch that. Um, there's a desensitization process that is happening. And I, I want you to just make it, I just want you to make an informed decision if you're going to continue to watch, uh, if you're going to continue to have this be part of your life. Personally, I don't. And let me say, I believe in, I believe in owning your pleasure um, especially if it makes it, especially if it helps you keep your commitment to abstinence and saving yourself for marriage. Um, however, it should come from a place of physical enjoyment, not lustful thoughts. So it's never been a regular part of my experience in owning my pleasure. Okay, goddess. Jasmina91, I screen recorded. Dem Marissa said that I took a screenshot. Thank you so much, goddess. Um, you can DM me anytime. Zephar Narnia. Now you made me want to watch Narnia from your username, goddess. I messed up having messing with a man who hated his mom. Ooh, goddess, they will take it out on you every single time. Dem Marissa said my ex hated his family. T Rod Banks said, damn. Oh, that gets a hair flip. That gets some carotid artery exposure. Kate, the plant lady. Are you still dating Cooney? Kate, you would love my sister. She's like a plant mom to like over 80 plants. Um, am I still dating Cooney? Yes. We're actually going on a date and he should be here in like seven minutes. Um, are you TLRB? Are you waiting until marriage? Yes, I am. I've been seeing him four months. He's never even spent the night goddess. I highly recommend this approach. T. Rod Banks. I know that's right. So beautiful. I'm sorry. I'm way behind on the comments. Thank you. Illumi, Chels, 11. Your energy is bomb. Thank you. I feel like that's literally what we buy when we're buying life coaches. I have literally bought, I had a business coach over the summer. I bought your Manifesting Besties workshop. Her name's Flora. This is all about law of assumption and self-concept. Um, I also am currently in Shay Your Love Divas uh, program called DV University. Uh, it literally takes like two hours a day of <laughs> working on yourself, but um, I think that's what you actually buy, and I think that's what all of our goddesses will actually want to invest in themselves, and they'll actually want to be around bomb energy, and I think that's literally how my group, that's what my, my group coaching program is built on. It's freaking getting your energy to goddess vibes. Zeph Narnia is blocking them on social considering playing the law game. <sighs> Goddess. Um, a man X Samar. I've been single two months and have been doing intense healing work and want to start dating again. That's amazing, Goddess. Um, he, take some time to heal. This is, okay, let me tell you about this. I, I know this celebrity. I know of this celebrity. I actually, I just don't know who it was. But I saw this TikTok once that this woman said that I have vowed to not date for a year. If anyone knows her, please put it in the chat. I would love to catch up with it. I really have to catch up with the comments before he gets here in a minute. We're going to dinner. I'm so excited. Dinner and dance, as always. So, uh, Grace and Bloom 69. Hi, hi, gorgeous. How are you doing tonight? Hi, goddess. Miss you. 
T. Rod Bank said, shouldn't need that to each their own, I guess. Oh my. Sorry, I'm behind on the comments. I see, I feel, I know. I'm celibate just because I don't like anybody enough for that. Exactly. Olivia Janelle too, what foundation do you use? I, I use liquid foundation plus powder. I know at being 27, I probably don't need it. And thank you for saying it looks amazing. I actually feel like it's, the powder really makes the lines go in, but I, I, I wouldn't want to not set it with powder. Zeph and Narnia. I love Narnia. That's what inspired the name. Goddess, where can I watch it? I said that I think there's no streaming platforms that have it. T-Rod Banks says, lucky guy. Thank you, Goddess. The Rich Potato. Why do you wear pink and not red when red is scientifically proven to be the most alluring? Um, honestly, this is like a personal brand choice and also because I'm not a pygmy. Eleanor, how do you turn him down and tell him he isn't spending the night? You know how you do it, goddess? You never let him spend the night in the first place. Now he won't be surprised. And this is exactly where we're on we are on the separate bedrooms thing. If I'm going on if a guy is paying for me to go on a trip with him because he's my investor and he wants me to see him as husband provider material, if at home we're not spending the night and not having sleepovers and not being intimate because we're saving ourselves for marriage, then why would I stay in the same hotel room as him? T. Rod Banks, peace queen. Much love to all you beautiful women. Good luck. Thank you. We loved having you here. You rocked it. Demarissa, in your experience, is it better if men reach out or a woman should do it too? Goddess! <laughs> uh, Liz, Liz Mayer, 1993 says, you keep skipping me. Sorry, goddess. I, I, I didn't see it. I see. I feel I know, period. Don't give him the opportunity to assume he's spending the night. Exactly. Then you never have to come back from it. And you never have to say, no, I don't think we're ready to spend the night now because, oh, uh, uh, I'm goddess material and I'm wife material and saving myself for marriage. And I don't spend the night in the same hotel room as a man who's not my husband. Okay, goddess. Ellie Norer says, loved this live. You're the best. Finally caught up on the comments. Thanks for being here, goddess. I love doing life coaching and reflections with you. I love telling you my stories about my dating life. So see you tomorrow around six again. Please DM me on Instagram. I check it only a couple times a day. It's crazy. I'm like now obsessed with TikTok and I haven't gone on Instagram all day. Love you, goddess. I'm going on a dinner date. See you soon, goddess. Hope this helped you. Love you. Wait for the guide and the group coaching coming out in two weeks. Finally. Okay, goddess. Night, night. Happy Tuesday.